Gomes. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy 2K to God. My man Sess joining me once again. So we're gonna do another treat for you, another segment. It's gonna be called Thursday Throwbacks, where we take you back in the time and boxing history, and we talk about some of the best matchups that boxing has had to offer throughout its years of existence. Uh, the first one we wanna do the most popular, the biggest fucking upset possibly in boxing history. We're going to take you back to 1990. James Buster Douglas defeats Mike Tyson, a.k.a. Mm. Kid Dynamite, B. <laughs> Man. This fight fucked me up, fam. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo, like, Mike Tyson was fucking invincible, B. Like, mm-hmm. Nobody could touch the man, you know what I'm saying? And yep. at that time, I was a little nigga. I didn't know, you know, how to. <laughs> I didn't know how to break down fighters or nothing like that. You know, I was shit. I was casual, you know what I'm saying? At the time, I was boxing. We all gotta start somewhere. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, at the time, I was boxing and shit. 1990. I, yeah, I was. I was. I wasn't even 10. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And uh, but I did watch all those fights, and you know, I tried to mimic that style as, as a fight, mm -hmm. and um. I, the only thing you saw was Mike going in there and bobbing and weaving from left to right 100 miles an hour. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just boom, 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 boom. And then <laughs> up comes that left hook. Mm. Pretty much just like Joe Frazier, dog. Just without all... Joe Frazier didn't do all the bobbing and weaving like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that was Mike Tyson, man. Bob and weave. Maybe bait you with a little jab. But he's coming with that left hook. That was his fucking money punch. Yeah. The left or the right hook, B. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, motherfuckers... They were just falling. I remember when he fought uh, Michael Spinks. Oh. <laughs> nigga, he shit it on himself before he even got yeah. in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Took it right out of my mouth. Be exactly. My man was done at the press conference. Be like this <laughs> yo, big ass Mike showed up. Nigga was like, oh, oh, B. Oh, yeah, yeah. That nigga, you know what I'm saying? That motherfucker yeah. was done, B. I think he, um, if I'm not mistaken, Correct me, YouTube, if I'm wrong, but I think Michael Spinks retired shortly after that, B. Yeah. I think he was done. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, same thing with uh, the late, great uh, Trevor Burbick. That nigga shitted his pants as well. That nigga, yeah. that, that fight, Mike Tyson hit that man, right? Mm -hmm. And Trevor Burbick fell down, and then he tried uh, to get back up and fell down on the other I side of the ring. <laughs> oh, horrible, man. Horrible. horrible. Treating these motherfuckers, and these are ex-champions. Oh, yeah. Michael Spinks stopped uh, Larry Holmes from getting 50 and 0, beating Rocky uh, Marciano's record. Yeah. He beat, yeah, he beat uh, Larry Holmes when he was getting ready to get uh, 50 and 0. You yeah. Know so, uh, these guys were not bums. These were ex-world champions. He was just treating these niggas, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, sleeping and treating them. Sleeping and treating them, B. <laughs> and, and so, when Buster Douglas came, who was fight number three, of a four fight deal for Mike Tyson uh, from Don King before the fucking mega match between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield was supposed to go down, mm. right? Actually, I think Buster was fighting number four, B. He was the last bum mm. that Mike had to get out of there before fighting Evander Holyfield. Mm. So, so, you know, Don was like, yeah, get this bum out of here, then we get Evander, we get to make some real money. That's yep. all Don was talking about, B. Mm -hmm. And Mike Tyson went in there with a with an unclear conscience. My man was having a problem problems with his wife, Robin Givens. Uh, just two years prior to the fight, the infamous Barbara Walters interview happened, where yeah. Robin Givens pretty much put my man in the spotlight, mm. <laughs> and <laughs> Mike's jaw dropped to the ground. B one she was Snake, like, man. What she said, V? She was like, "It's been pure." Hell. Hell, yeah. <laughs> that nigga Mike was like, 
what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, yeah. You know what the fuck happened, B? Like, uh, she, she fucked him up. Everybody knows Mike Tyson was madly in love with ugly ass Robin Gibbons. You uh, know what I'm saying? I never liked, I never thought the bitch was bad. I never thought she was bad. Nah, B. It was, it was mad bitches way better than her. Way you know better. Mike was probably banging chicks way better than her. Damn bitch that put him in jail look better than fucking Robin. Yeah. Robin. That's a Ray Washington. She yeah. looked better than Robin B. Like, yeah. he should have yeah. fucking married her ass, nigga. You would have got him out of jail. For real, man. You know yeah. But yeah, man, that shit happened. Everybody knows he was really uh, madly in love with Robin. And I think that really fucked up his head. I'm not giving Mike any fucking excuses. Because uh, Buster Douglas's jab was all fucking oh, night long, B. And now, and now that I'm a enthusiast and an expert analyst, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can watch these fights. Uh, Mike Tyson with Mitch Mean Green, motherfucking mm -hmm. Tony TNT Tucker. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I watched how Mike Tyson was very susceptible to the jab in those two fights. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I had no idea as a little nigga. <laughs> as a man, as a, as a big willy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Now I know, and I'm watching that, and I'm like, oh, that was a bad matchup from the start. Yeah. Because that's Buster Douglas' major weapon was the, was the jab and the straight right hand. This motherfucker could stay at a distance and just pop, 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 pop that jab, then overcome and come with the overhand right. That was yeah. Buster's, that was his shit. Yeah. It was a bad matchup from the start, B. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was think, man. man. What you think, man? Ah oh, man, I was probably two years old when this fight <laughs> happened, man. Yeah. But um, I definitely remember everybody talking about it and everybody, it was always something that just came up whenever you mentioned Mike Tyson. You know, pe people talked about the knockouts, but they, they would always go back to what happened to him in Japan. Word. Uh, it was definitely a fight that, that Mike should have won, you know, um, just on paper. You know, I think Buster at the time was a 42 to 1 underdog. Ooh. He was, he was, he was, he was supposed to lose. Somebody got rich, dude. Oh, <laughs> I always say the dude that put money on Douglas probably still spending it. God. I mean, <laughs> somebody got, somebody got rich big time, man. But uh, this was for all the marbles, you know, uh, the WBC, WBA, IBF. Everything was on the line. All Mike had to do was show up, knock him out, and uh, go home. Mm -hmm. But uh, not only was the Robin Gibbons deal, you know, messing with him, it was also uh, Mike Tyson. You know, he wasn't training. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he was, right. um, uh, he's even admitted that he was banging every Japanese girl he could, he could, he could get in his hotel. <laughs> so with, uh... With, uh, with the combination of just what's going on in his personal life, yeah. what's going on inside the gym, uh, when you show up with all of those variables against you, man, you, 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 you're you normally never successful. And I, I believe leading up to this fight, Mike had actually gotten knocked down in sparring yeah. in oh, a yeah. gym. Yep. So, um, I mean, a lot of people, honestly, I believe seen this coming. You know, uh, they knew Mike was heading for a downfall. They just probably didn't know it was going to happen against somebody like Buster Douglas. Nah, man. But man, one of the greatest upsets probably in boxing history, man. I mean, to this day, I, I can't think of another clear cut victory that was an upset. Not a robbery, not a bad judge's call, not a bad decision, yeah. but just clear cut down the middle ass whooping <laughs> where mm. Mr. Invincible is a uh, human, you know? Let me ask you this. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Let's get into the fight. You remember the infamous eighth round of Mike Tyson oh. hit that motherfucker with an uppercut, right? Oh. He slipped one of his straight right hands and came back up with an yeah. uppercut. Buster Douglas was flat on his back, right? Yep. But the fucking referee didn't start counting until about five seconds in, B. Because yeah. he stopped to tell Mike to go back to his corner. Ah. So a lot of people, a lot of angry fans were saying that Mike Tyson actually won that fight because yeah. Buster Douglas got 15 seconds instead of 10. How you feel about that? Uh, man, you know what? It's almost, it's protocol 
for a ref to tell a fighter to go back to his to uh, go to a neutral corner yeah. whenever they score a knockdown. Uh, the count, I mean, it, it's to be disputed. You know, to me, Mike got the same count. Yeah. You know, um, the ref, he was a slow counter. I mean, yeah, some, was. you know, some some refs are kind of can you know that they they pretty consistent in their counting. It's like one, two, three. This ref was like one, two, two. three. You know. What the hell is that? Oh, a four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You know so saying? I mean, it, it's to be disputed. You know, when I went back and I watched it. Um, I didn't really feel like, you know, Buster got that long of a count. I mean, yeah. you know, if you look at the um, the the ref on the outside, that's normally where they pick the count up. Right, right. Is, uh, you know, as soon as, a, as soon as a fighter touches the ground, even if the referee in the ring isn't counting, there's a ref on the outside that's actually giving him where to pick the count up from. A lot of people don't know that. That's a good point, though. Yeah. So wherever um, this particular ref picked up that count from, it would have came from uh, outside the ring. Mm -hmm. And like I said, his count was consistent. It was it was it was long and drawn out, but Mike got the same count. Mike was just done. Yeah, he, I mean, he he couldn't get back up. Out, exactly. Yeah. It, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mike's mouthpiece was out, and he really couldn't get back up. Had Mike got up and put that mouthpiece back in his mouth, he probably would have got knocked out like worse. Yeah, it, it, the fight would have been done regardless. Yeah, yeah, it would have, like, Mike had nothing left in him. He was he was a beaten fighter, uh, but I think more so than that, he was a beaten man. Absolutely. Um, he had nothing else to give. He had nothing else to, uh, to look forward to, you know? See, the crazy shit about that, the reason why people were tripping a lot is because had had Mike Tyson have gotten up, right? Uh-huh. He had a chance to win a split decision victory. Um, oh, yeah. At the time of the stoppage, Buster Douglas was up 88 to 82 on one scorecard. Ooh. Mike Tyson was up 87 to 86 on another. And then the final scorecard was a draw at 86. Oh. So, uh. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't see Buster Douglas is winning the fight more than Mike Tyson was. Obviously, yeah, to me, the other judge. Yeah, I mean, like I just like I said, B, the fucking straight right hand and the jab was absolutely all night. It, 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 it was money. It was money. And then and then the knockout sequence, B. It was oh, like, that shit was the most beautiful. Man, straight. <laughs> oh, exactly. Uh, just pure straights. Nothing else. Just, just, just pure straights. I, I, oh, man. man. Yeah, you know, works. Mike. Mike was done, man. Um, another point that I want to make to a lot of people. Uh, if you know, when you go back and watch this fight, look at look at all the unfamiliar faces that you see in Mike's corner. Word. You know, um, and that's the one thing when you're in a fight like this, the the one thing a fighter has needs to look forward to is uh, it's just that familiar, you know, um, just being familiar with his corner. Yeah. You know, the guys that that truly know him, that genuinely know him and know what he's capable of. You know, and uh, man, when Mike, I mean, I could just imagine Mike looking up with with the one good eye he had, <laughs> and just seeing all these guys that he really didn't know. You yeah. know, um, yeah, it was, was just his entourage. They weren't, yeah, yeah, I basically. Think maybe two of them was actually homies. The rest of them were just niggas that hang out with him. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 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 the most telling part of this fight really isn't. I mean, it's it is the knockdown because of who the knockout because of who Mike Tyson was. But another part of the fight that nobody pays attention to is look at when Mike goes back to the corner and uh, his eyes swollen. Uh -huh. And his corner is actually using a glove yeah. with water in it yeah. to uh, take down the swelling. This is the unified, I mean, this is the WBC heavyweight champion. Uh, he had three belts at the time. Three belts. <laughs> the WBC, the WBA, and the, and the IBF, man. Yep. 
and you putting a fucking glove with water in it on his eye? I, it's, it's, I mean, everything that possibly could have went wrong did go wrong that night. And it was inevitable. It was inevitable. I mean, it's, it's one of those things, man, that, like I said, when you watch all the variables that played into this loss, it was inevitable. Mike was going to lose regardless. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was. I, 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 I remember, too, to, to uh, add on to the, the uh, discrepancy in the corner. I remember they were using Vaseline. This is how much they didn't know Mike. They were using Vaseline, and my man was allergic to Vaseline. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's how much they didn't know Mike Tyson, dude. Wow. I mean, I don't want to make excuses because this was a monumental win for Buster Douglas. Yeah. But at the same time, the whole, the, the shit outside the ring, Mike Tyson's a very mentally fragile person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. very, been, very much so, yep. You know what I'm saying? My, my man was contemplating suicide after Cus D'Amato died. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So he, he's been a, he's always been a mentally fragile person. And he's always been a guy that's always looked, and I ain't trying to sound like no pussy ass nigga, but he's always been a guy that's always looked for love. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Look for it from his family, didn't get it. Look from for, for it from uh, Custy Amato, got it in a short amount of time, and then he was gone. He yeah. got it from I can't remember the guy's first name, but he was a promoter. Uh, Caton was his last. Oh name. yeah, uh, I believe it was it Bill Caton. I, I believe so. I I can't remember. Bill, but yeah, Bill Caton and uh, Jimmy Jacobs, I yeah. think, were were uh, with Mike. Absolutely. And then uh, the other cat, uh, 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 Kevin Rooney. Kevin Rooney. Yeah. So yep. he, he looked. Looked for love from them. Yeah. He got into some beef with Bill Caton because Bill Caton wasn't getting him the, the fights that he wanted or yeah. the kind of money that he wanted. So he left them. Then he tried to get love from Don King. Don King is a criminal, B. That nigga ain't gonna show you no Man. Money. He's all about I, his end. I, I think if anybody does, you know, um, to the fans out there that, that have never um, did any research on uh, Don King, you, you should definitely do your research on Don King. He's got a real interesting story. Oh, yeah. Uh, he actually killed a guy. A lot of cats oh, yeah. don't know that. I, yep. Uh, Don King actually killed a dude, you know. Um, so he's a very, very, very interesting character yeah. to uh, to research. If you are, if you definitely a boxing head and you went to boxing. Yeah. Man, his story is, uh, is pretty crazy. Yeah. You know. But that nigga, um, keeps, that nigga keeps muscles around him, dude. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, these yeah. Niggas do oh, definitely. Dirty work. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I remember, man, watching, um, not to get off the topic, but yeah. just, to, just, just to paint a picture for the fans out there, uh, I'm going to give a quick story. Uh, I remember when Don King was trying to sign the Klitschko brothers, and uh, the uh, Klitschkos came to his house, and, you know, he was treating them. You know how you would treat two guys that you want to sign. Mm. And he knew that they were into music. You know, particularly, you know, uh, the piano and just, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So Don sat down at the piano and he was, uh, he was playing for him. You know, and they were just amazed at how good he was playing the piano, right? Mm -hmm. But they looked down at his feet and he really wasn't playing the piano. It was a, it was a, it was a recording or like one of those ghost pianos that kind of played for you. And uh, Don just, Don just knew the keys that the piano was gonna, you know, play. So he made it look like he was, he was playing it. Oh, I mean, damn. Don, Don King is a real crook, man. That's actually, um, and, and if anybody wants to, wants to check that out, they actually got it on recording. Uh, it's on the Klitschko Brothers documentary, and it's called Klitschko. Wow. Yeah, man, he he's a big time crook, man. So, uh, but uh, to to I have to say this: those are the kind of people that Mike surrounded himself with. You know, Mike Mike surrounded himself with uh, pimps, prostitutes, drug dealers, uh, just all kind of people. These were this is where Mike, I think, felt a sense of. Uh, a sen just, just a sense of wanting. Right. You know, these people wanted him for something. He had it, and that was really kind of what he started to confide in: is yeah. the people that 
you know, we're just gonna take everything from him. It sounds crazy, but that's just how it was. Absolutely, and and that's why he, <clears throat> that's why he let Don King get away with so much. Yeah. Because Don, I'm telling you, man, was all about love. Don King was showing him. Yeah. He was show, he he was uh giving him the illusion that he actually loved Mike, but that's all Mike wanted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's and, all he wanted. And then with with Robin Givens, that shit was like. That was the, the atomic bomb right there. That was it. Yeah. That, that fucked yeah. everything up. Let me, again, let me, I'm not trying to give my man excuses. Oh, no, 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 no. This we is not, real shit. Yeah, this yeah. These are shit. these are all the variables, man, that that uh, played into what happened, you know. Um, but let me ask you this, 2K. Mm -hmm. um, if Mike doesn't lose that fight, where is he? If Mike beats Buster Douglas, where does he go? Okay. <clears throat> so, like we were, we mentioned earlier, this was fight or this is supposed bum number four of a four fight deal with Don King before he actually got Evander Holyfield. Yep. So he would have been on, went on to fight Evander. I think he would have beat Evander Holyfield because the Evander of the '80s, uh -huh. he was still a small cruiserweight. He came, he was a cruiserweight champion. Yeah, and, uh, he had just gotten to the heavyweight division. Um, he's not the Evander of 1996, 1997, the two years when he fought Mike Tyson, right? Yeah. Uh, two totally different Evanders. I really believe the Evander of, of the late 90s was better than the at, at heavyweight anyway. Yeah. Um, than the Evander of the 80s. I think Tyson's speed, um, his inside game would have been too much. Evander has never been the type of guy to throw a jab. And like yeah. I said, when you keep Mike Tyson on the end of your jab, like Buster Douglas did, you can beat him. You yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think Mike Tyson would have easily got on the inside of a smaller Buster Douglas. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, a, a smaller Evander Holyfield, right. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not saying he would have knocked Evander out. Evander's only been knocked out by one man. Actually, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, James Tony knocked him out. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But that was more... That wasn't, you know, flight, yeah, he yeah. flat on his ass. And plus, he was an old man at the time. Yeah, he was, he wasn't the real deal. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The motherfucker was the old deal. But anyway, yeah, yeah, word. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, I don't think Mike would have laid him flat. But I think he would have hurt him. Mm. And I think he would have won on points. I really do. I, I really believe. <laughs> if, if not a knockout. If not. Man, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know if I can get with that one, 2K. <laughs> and I'm a... I'm a and I'm gonna say, here's my reason real quick. I think that Mike Tyson, at that particular time in his career, with those guys in his corner and with Don King behind him and with everything going on in his life, I really believe um, all you needed to beat Mike back then was, was a will, determination, and heart. You know, I think... Um, I really think that's what Buster kind of bought in the ring. You know, um, aside from that good jab he had, man. I mean, that was that was one of the one of the defining factors in the fight. But at the same time, just having those three intangibles, you know, will determination and, and some heart, uh, you might have beat Mike. Yeah. You know, so 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 and and we all know Evander has the biggest heart. He's got just ample amount of will. And uh, his determination is like second to none. Right. So at that particular time, man, I might have sided with a uh, with an Evander Holyfield, you know, for the upset. Okay, and that shit, that's acceptable. I don't think the fight was 90-10 at all. I think it. Yeah, was, yeah, it was. I'm like 55-45 Mike Tyson because Evander okay. was still an excellent fucking fighter. I mean, yeah. Buster Douglas, <laughs> after he beat Mike, collected all them titles. My nigga only had like 15 minutes of fame because the very next fight, Evander Holyfield laid this nigga out in the three third round. round. <laughs> yep, three rounds. He was like, hey, point. bro, you know you're not supposed to have that shit, B. Give me Go that. Give me yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, so, I, I, I take that off your shoulders. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, just no respect. <laughs> yep. No respect, B. But, yep. Oh, but, but let me ask you this, 2K, before we wrap up, man. Uh -huh. Because I think I think the fans would, would want to know. Um. Okay, let's say he beats Douglas, he beats Holyfield. Okay. Who would have beat Mike? I think Riddick Bo. 
if they would have fought. Okay. I don't okay. Even, I don't even think a young Lennox Lewis would have beat Mike Tyson because at that time Lennox Lewis wasn't the Lennox Lewis of uh, believe. Oh no no, yeah. no 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 yeah, no no exactly of two the two thousand one Lennox I think they fought in two thousand one or two thousand five. Yeah. I can't remember right now, but um he wasn't that Lennox Lewis. Yeah. That Lennox Lewis. That motherfucker was coming behind a jab, fighting <sighs> from a distance. He used every bit of his fucking reach. Yeah. He to turn his opponent and shit, even though his footwork wasn't all that great. He yeah. still was able to turn motherfuckers. The old Lennox Lewis didn't do that. The old Lennox Lewis was kind of sloppy. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was, he was skillful, but he was still sloppy. Hence yeah. why he got knocked out by Oliver McCall. Yeah, so, yep, yep, yep. So I think Mike would have beat him if they ever would have fought. But Riddick Bo, man, Riddick, I don't think Mike would have hurt Riddick Bo not one time. I mean, yeah. if Vander was hitting this motherfucker, with oh. if Vander, oh, I love that fight too, because Vander was like, ah, ah, yeah. ah, inside, and Bo just taking them bitches, yeah, taking them bitches yeah. and coming back, yeah. ah, I was like, man, mm. this nigga don't get hurt. Yeah, yo, I mean, it, it, man, Riddick Bo was... He was a beast, man. He was a beast. I don't think a lot of people understand, man. Riddick in his prime and just in shape, yeah. he can rival, I mean, any heavyweight up, definitely any heavyweight up today. Yeah. And, and 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 any heavyweight of, uh, you know, back then, man. I mean, he was he was just that dude. He was he was just super determined, you know, like you said, in the in the Holyfield fights, man, whew, my goodness. He took some shit, yeah. you know, and he just kept on trucking, kept on coming, you know. But uh, but nah, that's 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 definitely a good fight, man. I would pick Bo to, I would actually pick Bo to beat Mike, you know, um, as well, man. I think, I think, uh, you know, Mike would have probably been discouraged after oh, yeah. he hit Bo with everything he had. And the motherfucker didn't move, and he did move. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. and then. The ring, man. Yep. Yep, yep. And then, you know, Bo, um, man, Bo was actually, he, he he always surprised me because he was a big dude that was not afraid to fight you in the inside, oh, to fight man. you up close, yeah. Yeah. you know? So, I mean, definitely, I would uh, I would definitely pick Bo to beat him if they would ever fight. And also, I want to also mention, and this could possibly be another uh, Thursday throwback episode, if Crazy Ike, Oh, crazy Ike Abuchi. Woo! If this motherfucker wouldn't have been crazy Ike. Woo! He would have beat Mike as well. That's a him and Riddick Bo have very Man. similar style. Yeah. Ike, Ike Abuchi was actually there's almost the same person, motherfucker. Like, like yeah. I remember yeah. when fought David Tua. David Tua couldn't hurt him. David Tua can fucking crack. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. That motherfucker probably at that time was one of the hardest hitting heavyweights. He couldn't hurt Ike. Man, yeah. And then Ike went on to beat him to an easy unanimous decision. Like it was easy work. And at that time, David Tua was that nigga. Like Oh yeah, yeah. He was that, he yeah. Was that guy that was uh the next Mike Tyson. Exactly, yeah. It, you know, a lot of guys were like, damn, that guy's good. I'm gonna have to duck that nigga. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. And yeah. Ike went in there and beat that nigga easily. I, I think Ike would have beat Mike. I, I think so, bro. The president. Ike could be a Bucci. You know what I'm saying? I think <laughs> he, he was a he was a, uh, yeah, that dude was a beast, man. That dude, that dude was a beast. Yeah. All right, man. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. YouTube, drop us a comment. What did you think about the 1990 fight between James Buster Douglas and Mike Kid Dynamite Tyson? Mm -hmm. Possibly one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. What did you think? What were you doing? What is what, what were you doing at the time? What is your opinion on it? How do you think shit would have happened if the tables were turned? And tell us, us who would have beat him. Exactly. Tell us who yeah, beat Mike. we want to know who you think would have beat him. <laughs> yeah. If it wasn't if it wasn't James, who would have beat him, right? Yep. Let us know YouTube. Drop a comment. Do what you do, but be real. This is real talk for real fans.